Greetings everybody, this is Jake Soul from humanmetamorphosis.com. Welcome. I've noticed that a lot of people are showing a lot more interest in what 2012 is all about, supposedly, and people are also showing a lot more interest in such things as the UFO phenomena, uh, ascension and DNA activation are also things that people are really starting to pay attention to and wonder what it is all about. Because of this I thought I'd create this video which explains how they all interrelate together and how they relate to our personal experience. Along the way I'll suggest some further viewing and reading material for people that are interested and at the end of this video I'm going to share some sacred information and a golden opportunity for those who resonate with it. There has been a lot of speculation regarding what will happen in 2012 and a huge amount of information is available regarding this through various publications over the internet and even through the movie 2012 and this has created in general a lot of confusion about what is really happening. We need to therefore look at it from the broader perspective of interdimensional unified field physics and how this applies to our bodily anatomy if we are to really understand how this relates to our personal experience. It's not ideal to summarize this sort of information but in a short video there's only so much we can do so here we go. We live in a 15 dimensional universal time matrix system that is separated by magnetic repulsion zones into five harmonic universes, densities or experiential fields if you like. Each of these are composed of three corresponding dimensions. As light manifests outwards from the ultra quantum level or the primal light fields it forms initially through spiraling energy, sound and vibration into the fifth harmonic universe in dimensions 13, 14 and 15. This is really the first harmonic universe, but from our perspective in density and matter, looking backward, it's the fifth. As light continues to manifest outward from point zero, it formulates into the fourth harmonic universe in dimensions 10, 11 and 12, then the third harmonic universe in dimensions 7, 8 and 9, through the second harmonic universe in dimensions 4, 5 and 6 before finally arriving to us in the first harmonic universe which is composed of dimensions 1, 2 and 3. This is the most dense and complex level of creation where we are, it's the furthest level out. If it seems hard to consider that there might be more dimensions than just the three that we live in, I would recommend viewing the BBC documentary Parallel Universes or The Elegant Universe, both of these are science documentaries that demonstrate our current scientific understanding of a multidimensional universe. There's links to both these videos below this video. Because of the three dimensional makeup of each harmonic universe, our perception of reality is primarily based on the construct of depth, width and height of the environment. All physical manifestation of shapes in our reality are derived from subtle variations between these three primary planes, or dimensions, which produce the holographic nature of the world that we live in. In addition to this, there is a great variety of electromagnetic complexity that gives us different elements which formulate the different levels of density such as rubber, plastic, wood, stone and metal and all of the things that comprise our environment. Although these things appear to be different to each other, they're all just really different complexities of one electromagnetic substance that we've called light. All the fundamental forces of nature are unified at the primal level and this is what scientists are referring to when they talk about the quantum field or the unified field. It is one field of light that all other things are made of. The second, third, fourth and fifth harmonic universes also have three dimensional reality fields yet they exist in a progressively less dense and more unified way as light returns back to its original and undifferentiated state. This means that the rules governing materialization and experience are different as energy responds more dramatically to our thoughts and intentions and ultimately instantaneously at the highest level. Some of the first questions that arise regarding these higher harmonics or other worlds uh, what is it like there? Who has been there to know this? And if so, who lives there now and permanently? And some relevant answers include, there are people on earth here right now who are capable of accessing these worlds. They can be described to people who ask and the beings that live there are in fact in contact with us right now. Beings that live in these high dimensional harmonics are in an ascended state relative to us, yet they can still communicate with us through mind if we are receptive to it, and at times, if it's appropriate, through direct physical contact. They have been attempting to communicate to us what our planet is about to go through and has been going through because so very few people are aware of a higher dimensional reality and many people have not even considered that we are actually not alone in this universe and in fact ET races have always been in contact with us throughout history. 
If you find this difficult to accept, I would recommend the history documentary Ancient Aliens, which highlights the resounding concrete evidence that this is true. There is a link to this documentary below also. As our solar system moves along in its trajectory around the Milky Way galaxy, we move through many more cycles other than just our solar year, one of which is the 24,000 year orbital cycle around the central sun of the Pleiadian system, Alcyon. As we move through these cycles, our planet is exposed to different cosmic rays from the other stars, which affect the particles composing our planet and our bodies, and what is happening on the planet with the consciousness. Of significance to what is happening right now on Earth, is that of a 26,556 year harmonic time cycle called a Uago cycle. This is the natural amount of time required for our planet to move through dimensions 1, 2 and 3 of harmonic universe number 1. During the period at the end of the Uago cycle, there is a harmonic convergence where energetic portals open up and for a very brief period of time they allow transition of the suitably evolved consciousness existing on the planet through to the higher frequency particle base of the next harmonic universe or further if we are aligned with this. This is otherwise known of as ascension, and it can happen on a personal level, a civilization level, a planetary level, or even all three at once. There are periods during the Uago cycle where ascension is possible, although the period at the end is generally when the largest opportunity exists. The last Uago cycle completed approximately 24,500 BC, which means that we are now moving through the last few years of the current cycle, which peaks between 2012 in 2017 AD. During this peak, there is a special period of time called a stellar activation cycle, wherein the high frequency cosmic rays from the other parts of the universe, such as Andromeda, Orion and Arcturus, align with the Earth. As this takes place, stellar wave infusions from the other galactic and universal locations cause a vibratory shift in the planetary particle base, which causes the particles to begin pulsating faster. An example of what happens to particles when energy is added to it is water when it turns into steam. The particles become more spaced out and lose density. This is a dimensional shift from the second dimension of fluid to the third dimension of gas. The first dimension is solid. As we are aware, the sun is our primary source of energy on the planet, but during stellar activation cycles, the energy of other greater galactic and universal suns combine and focus on the planet, causing an increase in energy within the planetary particles. This is actually why global warming is occurring, not because of carbon emissions, but because of the stellar wave infusions that we are currently moving through. It's interesting to note that our bodies are actually as much as 80% water, but don't worry, we're not going to be vaporized. The previous example was just to illustrate how particles can change density when energy is added. Our bodies are actually equipped to safely move through this, as it is built into the capacity of our DNA. The ascension process is a biological transmutation of the body from a carbon-based biology into a carbon silica, a silica-based biology, or even a liquid plasmic light biology at the fourth harmonic universal level. There are specific genetic codes which can also integrate the fifth harmonic universal currents and activate the flame body, but these are only generally utilized by star seeds which have already attained a high evolutionary status. The next logical question is then, what will happen to us during the shift? Well, you might have guessed from what was just discussed that this has something to do with our DNA, and it does. Most people are completely unaware how dysfunctional their DNA is, even though scientifically we are aware that more than 90% of the DNA is not being coded for cellular reproduction. This vast majority of our genetic template has been called junk DNA because it appears to be useless. A computer also appears to be useless, however, when it is unplugged. The reason that the DNA appears to be disassembled on a physical level is because the higher strands of DNA existing in the wavelength frequencies of light corresponding to the higher harmonic universes are not active. Therefore, the lower manifestation is scrambled and organized also. This is also why the majority of the population currently use less than 10% of their brain. The parts of the brain which are inactive correspond to the higher dimensional DNA. The level of DNA active on the population in general is around 2.5 to 3.5 strands of the original 12 strand potential. As mentioned previously, there are genetic codes that accommodate the fifth harmonic in dimensions 13, 14 and 15, and therefore have more strands to their DNA template but this does not apply to most of us. These people will generally have an ability to wake up to their potential earlier on in life and thereby model that potential for others. More specifically, there are currently 144,000 people here on Earth right now for the purpose of this and to raise the frequency of the planet as a whole in preparation for the transharmonic shift we are now moving through. These people are known as the indigo children and they are here to help us realize our potential. 
The term indigo child does not mean that they are all children right now. Many have grown into young adults. The term refers to the energy field which resonates to indigo wavelength frequency or the sixth dimension. Indigo children come in with six strands of their DNA active which gives them an ability to act directly from their soul identity and therefore in line with their purpose for being here. Unfortunately, because they tend to be different to the vast majority and thereby challenge those around them, they are often ostracized by their peers or tagged by drug companies as ADHD or ADD because they are too smart to pay attention to what appears to them to be boring subjects in class. It is quite typical that new paradigms are attacked when they first arise as they challenge the contemporary viewpoint that the many people identify themselves with. The day I was born, I met myself. The day I was born, I met my young mother. The day I was born, I met Christ sleeping in my cradle. So back to what will happen to us during the shift. The indigo children are frequency holders for the earth and already align with the transharmonic shift into density 